QSR Media recently got together with Stan Gordon, the man behind Cold Rock, Pretzel World, Mr Whippy and Nutchack brands, to find out what's on the horizon for this dynamic group. Tell us about the FFCO group. Franchise Food Company was formed in 2009 to hold the interests of two of our brands, one the Australian iconic brand Mr Whippy, which is associated with, with soft serve, and Pretzel World. Then in 2009, late 2009, Franchise Food Company acquired the Cold Rock franchise system, which is a multi-site retailer of ice cream and related products. And then about six months later, we acquired the interests of Nutshack. You've talked a little bit about repositioning your Nutshack brand. What exactly do you have in mind? Yeah. Nutshack traditionally has tried to compete with the supermarkets and the the, the grocery market in terms of nuts and confectionery. If the brand needs to do that, it will fail. We can never compete against the majors, the woolies, the Safeways. So how are we trying to reposition it? We need to create a new experience, and I use the word experience a lot in my talking. The nut check needs to be an experience. We, we're going to try and reposition it to upmarket nuts and snacks, upmarket confectionery, um, and, and a new product that Again, I can't divulge now, but it's a new hot product that's really big in the States that we believe we can actually bring through within our, within our business. But the business also needs to be an interactive business. So we don't want customers just to merely go up to a counter and order a bag of nuts. As with our other brands, there needs to be some kind of movement, some kind of innovative, some kind of excitement in the purchasing experience of the nuts and upmarket confectionery. Nutshack will never compete with supermarkets. We can't do it on price. We need to have something different. And that's really where we're looking at it. We're looking to, the stores will look different. We'll keep the Nutshack brand. We think there's some merit in keeping that. But the whole experience will be very different to what's traditionally been around. And we think we'll revive the whole snack food um, experience. What's in store in the next 12 to 24 months for the group? We will definitely do an acquisition. We're looking at international expansion. Um, we are, in fact, go overseas in the next week to go and ascertain is there is there an opportunity to take a couple of our brands to, to a different continent. Um, we The group will continue to grow. Uh, both, in fact, all the brands we believe will continue to grow. We'd like to reposition the Mr. Whippy brand to that of the iconic ice cream van, which most Australians know, and um, as the Green Sleeves music, which we actually own a trademark on that one. The Cold Rock will continue to grow, um, again, through acquisition, but also through organically. We plan to open about 15, 20 stores a year. Historically, that's what we've done. We would continue to do that uh, within that business. I think one of the jewels in the crown that's probably under, underutilized is the Pretzel World brand. We would look for a small bakery chain um, that we can actually get involved and bring our Pretzel World, which is really a bakery product, um, into that and try and get it more into mother of the market. So exciting 12 to 24 months ahead. Um, we see ourselves, we're currently at about 150 stores as a system. We see ourselves probably 200 plus within that period. Ice cream for seasonal business. How do you make it work 365 days of the year? In fact, ice cream is not as seasonal as one would think. We obviously get peaks in December, January, Christmas period, as one would expect. Um, our worst months are probably August. The colder months, the June, July, we actually get a peak in terms of school holidays. So while it is down, we probably average the whole year, except for a peak in December, January, probably November a little bit. What we are doing within the Cold Rock ice cream brand is we're looking to bring in a colder a, a product to match those cold environments. So for example, this winter, we are looking to bring in waffles, which we think is an exciting product, although it's an eat-in. But really what we're going to be promoting is our take-home packs. So people will go and get movies or sit in front of a fireplace in a warm environment and take a litre of ice cream which is individualised to your specific taste. And we would see that as a huge marketing opportunity for our business where instead of taking it out and eating an ice cream cone or a small cup along the street, we'd actually take a take-home pack, an exciting take-home pack, and eat it within the environment of your home. You were quite vocal last year about the Slovakia administration process. Yes. Why is that? 
I think the process that, that was undertaken wasn't followed properly. Um, the, the vendors of Suvlaki Hut approached us, they approached uh, other parties. They were playing one off against the other, which is correct. It went into administration and the same afternoon the, another party actually purchased the business. Now we have no problems with, with other parties buying businesses, with being beaten to the punch, etc. But the whole process wasn't, as I understand it, followed through in terms of the administration, the, the, the company and administration and liquidation process that ASIC has said that. In fact, in today's paper, um, one of the business papers, there's actually an article that liquidators aren't following the process and we would endorse that very strongly. It's not only the Suvlaki hut that we had a problem with, there is another business, and I don't want to be sued, but there's another business that went to an administration. We offered 100 cents in the dollar for the business. It was purchased with, I think, under 30 cents in the dollar to the creditors. Really what happened is landlords got screwed, suppliers got screwed. It was purchased by parties acting for the bankrupt company, the same parties acting for the liquidator, bought the business and put it into one of their brands. I think that's disgraceful. I think people should be distancing themselves, especially if you, you're in the profession and you actually understand what's going on. Now again, without mentioning names, it's just disgraceful what happened. Further, there's, a big, there's another chain where the business went into receivership and the same directors with the same shareholders purchased the business back. How can that happen? It's just, it shouldn't happen. If a business goes into liquidation, there should be somebody to save it, but not the same people who've made mistakes to buy it back, or buy it back and, and hurt creditors, and dare I say, hurt landlords. Why? If you've made a mistake, cop it on the chin and move forward. Don't let other people pay for your mistakes. And I feel pretty passionate about that. Food retailing can be a pretty tough environment. What do you see as some of the trends or way forward? In my opinion, the face of retailing is going to change. I think areas and retail and, and tenancy and tenure is going to be multi-branded rather than necessarily franchisees having multi-sites. That's a completely new way of looking at things. So for example, if you take, you asked earlier about Suvlaki Hut, we have a Suvlaki Hut who's in fact in the process of debadging and a Cold Rock store in Canberra. The results are phenomenal. They are doing almost the same dollar values out of Suvlaki's as they are under I within ice creams. Why? Because one is a, is a meal and then there's a dessert experience. Now we've seen this more and more and more. So if you take the shopping centre environment, we believe if you take a tenure of X number of square metres, by increasing that marginally and putting a second brand and perhaps even a third brand but allied within it, so for example, and, and I use the, word very, the words very loosely, a food court within the same tenancy, provided it's all within the same snack environment, that fun, that treat environment, it will work. Thanks for your time today with QSR Media. And thank you, Justin.